Hey there everyone, Mr. Lewis here, ready to go through the fourth and final section of the development portion of Unit 8 here in AP Hug today as we discuss women and development. And what we're really trying to do is examine how the roles of women change in a society as that society develops, both economically and socially. And what we find is that expanded development tends to lead to expanded educational opportunities for women and expanded economic opportunities for women, which both serve as the foundation for those changing roles. One of the metrics that is commonly used to gauge not only development, but also gender equality in a country is income equality. For example, in the United States in 1979, women earned about 62% of what men earned. By 2010, that number had improved, but only to 81%. And if you look a little bit closer at that 81%, you'll see it's not the same for all women in the United States. And if you look a little bit closer at the different types of jobs that women have, what you'll see is that the statistics tell us as women get into upper management or executive level jobs, that gap only continues to expand. Now, that's just one way to look at gender equality within a country and within an economy. Another way is gross national income per capita, per person, for both men and women. In Yemen, for example, men make on average over 15 times as much as women. So clearly, there are some gender equality issues, not just in Yemen, but in Southwest Asia and Central Asia and North Africa. If you look at the countries that are listed here, those are the common regions that are popping up at the lower end of this metric. At the other end of this metric is Germany. Germany has the smallest gap in terms of a ratio between gross national income per capita for men and for women in their country. Another statistic we could use is labor force participation rate. And again, what we find in Yemen is that there are some issues. Only 6% of the female population ages 15 and up in Yemen are actually participating in the labor force. And if you're being kept from participating in the labor force, that is going to limit your opportunities to be financially independent, to be economically empowered, and thus to potentially change your role, expand your role in a society. There are two indices that are commonly used to measure the level of gender equality in a country. One is called the Gender Related Development Index, and all this is doing is taking the Human Development Index, or HDI, and splitting it between males and females in a country. So it uses the same three components, life expectancy, years of schooling, and gross national income per capita, and then splits those components between males and females. And if there's a big gap between those two numbers, we know that there are some gender equality issues. The other index that's commonly used is the Gender Inequality Index, GII. And this uses three components, reproductive health, empowerment, and economic status. And ranking at the top of this list, meaning the the most gender equality in 2020 was Norway. And we actually saw that Norway ranked number one in the Human Development Index as well. And if we compare Norway's statistics here to the United States, which is ranked 17th in the 2020 GII rankings, you'll see that the United States actually ranks a little bit higher in one of the categories, but in most of them, there's a pretty big gap. For example, maternal mortality ratio, the number of deaths for women per 100,000 live births. In Norway, that number is 2. In the United States, that number is 19, almost 10 times as much. Or the adolescent birth rate, the number of births per 1,000 women ages 15 to 19. In Norway, that number is 5.1. In the United States, 19.9 almost four times as much, or the share of seats in parliament, in government, the percent held by women. 
For Norway, that percentage is 40.8. The United States, 23.7. So this just gives you an idea of some of the different indices that are used to put together a few different important statistics in an attempt to gauge the level of gender equality in a country. But it's not just about the economy. As you saw in the gender inequality index, it's not just labor force participation or income per capita. We have to look at things like the freedoms that women do or do not have in a country. If we are to fully measure gender equality, we have to look at educational opportunities. We have to look at domestic interaction. How are women treated in the home within those societies? Each of these indicators are just as important, if not more so, than those economic indicators. And when we look at Afghanistan specifically, some of these indicators are very troubling. For example, the adolescent birth rate is 69, much higher than we saw in both Norway and the United States, much, much higher. Antenatal or prenatal care coverage. So the percentage of women who have at least one prenatal or pre-birth visit with a doctor, 65.2%. You would hope that number was much, much closer to 100. The female share of employment in senior and middle management, only 4.3% in Afghanistan. And then finally, the maternal mortality ratio. Remember, ours was 19, Norway's was 2. Afghanistan's number is 638. So there are clearly some major gender equality issues in Afghanistan, and the United States has been entangled in a conflict in Afghanistan for a long, long time now, and one of the things that is trying to be done in an attempt to not just bring peace to the area, but bring greater gender equality to the area is include some gender development goals within the peace talks that are ongoing between the opposing forces in Afghanistan and the Afghanistan government and the United States. So it's not just about winning a war. It's about trying to promote development. And in this case, that development is specifically tied into women's rights in Afghanistan, trying to expand liberties and freedoms and opportunities for women in Afghanistan before we completely uh, leave that conflict. So that's it for section 8.4. Thank you for tuning in as always. Next time we will begin the second portion of unit eight, which is industrial development. So until then, thank you once again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.